Hello and thank you for coming to the very last day, episode 10 of Healing the Division, brought about by COVID policies. <laughs> I am Karen Keener of The Sovereign Mom and I am hosting this wonderful little live talk series that I've been doing for this is day 10, so for the last nine nine days up till now today's day 10 and um talking about how to build better relationships create better relationships and how to effectively use boundaries in a better way to bring about better relationships so that you'll never be alone again <laughs> uh, i know for a lot of people for the last two years um it, it, families have gone apart and people have found themselves lonely, isolated, alone, not disinvited to their own families, holiday functions for not complying with certain restrictions or just because their families called off the holidays and said, look, we just can't be around you anymore because we're afraid we're going to catch cooties. So what I wanted to do was help people because during this last two years, I ended up, you know, I am, <laughs> I just got my friend Ellie's book, um, The Secrets to Successful Communication, and she wrote me the most lovely dedication in the back, but she said, um, that she finally wanted to thank me for my bold confidence and gift of polarizing communication that has her respect and awe. And that's kind of funny because Ellie, I've known since we were like four years old, like we lived in, we moved into a neighborhood. So we lived on the same street. And I remember the very first day I saw them, I think her and her brother were on big wheels out in their driveway. I want to say the very first time we walked down, I think there were six or seven houses down the road from where we lived. Anyway, she's published her book. I, I published mine just prior to her publishing hers and stuff. And I had the honor and privilege of getting to proofread it. So that was really, um, that was an honor to me to that she trusted me to do that. And that's beautiful Ellie right there. So it, this is available on Amazon, fantastic book. And will help you with communication. And that's part of what we're gonna be talking about today. I am a loud mouth polarizing, force in the universe and I never spend holidays alone. <laughs> I've always made my own family. I moved away from my family years ago, but even prior to that, I pretty much had different views and values and a different vision for my life than my family had. They never understood it. They never wanted to. <laughs> um, it was very weird and uncomfortable for a long time until I like learned to just accept that we're just so completely different and I'm better off finding my own family to love and to be with and to share and cherish my life with. And so, you know, as much as I am that, you know, um, polarizing, loud mouth, health, freedom and anarchy activist type personality, um, which is wonderful, I also... Um, how do I say this? I, um, I, I made hundreds of friendships by coming out of my shell and being more of myself, being more of what I feared would make me polarizing and eliminate a lot of friends ended up drawing friends to me like a magnet, you know, um, I'm kind of like a lightning rod in a way. And I think Ellie once described me that way. Um, but it, it is, it's a very attractive energy that draws people to you that are of the like mind and like values by being out there and being more myself and less hidden and less camouflaged and less afraid that I was going to hurt somebody's feelings. Um, hi, Ronald. Thank you for watching. Um, so this is been a big um, journey for me, I guess, to say that um, I had to get over my fear of like, oh, I'm going to offend somebody, you know, and whatnot. 
But today I want to talk about saying I love you, which is a really interesting thing. It's totally even beyond the, uh, it's beyond that um, point of coming out there, but meeting people that I like in my circles and whatever that I, that I feel love for. And um, I, I know what happens in relationships a lot of times is we get infatuated and we say we love somebody and we're infatuated. We're excited about somebody. We have an attraction for somebody. They make our heart flutter. It's a super fun and um, just a momentous occasion of feeling these strong feelings for people that we might have just, you know, gotten to know and it might be the first three months and everything and we want to spurt out the word I love you, you know, because those feelings are so overwhelming and big. And there are a lot of that is a chemical reaction called, um, it's oxytocin. It's, thank you, Crystal. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. We got to be open with our feelings. Um, however, we get confused a lot of times in romantic situations. So we say I love you before we really mean it. And then we realize, oh, uh, you know, like something happens and maybe they get just to be too much. Um, you know, you got a stage four clinger on your hands and you're like, oh gosh, how do I get rid of this person? And I'm so embarrassed. I said, I love you already. And I don't feel that way. I realized that was a huge mistake. Okay. So, you know, that happens with infatuation that we get real excited about someone in the first few days or few, first few weeks hanging out with them and stuff. And so we learn to reserve I love you for after the infatuation kind of wears off a little bit and after we really get to know someone and we really fall in love with their energy and their values and their character and things that are deeper than just that um, chemical, emotional infatuation. It is awkward, isn't it? <laughs> The infatuation can make for very awkward situations. Um, but what we do is we tend to reserve I love you for like very special people. So they do love that person. And I don't know. But then what I've noticed, and this was true for me, is that when we get in friendships, we don't want to say I love you because they're just friends. And we say that about guys. And we, you know, maybe, you know, our... Um, the the gender that we are attracted to. I'm sorry to, but, you know, assume that it would be a guy. Maybe you are a guy and you like girls or whatever, or you're a girl that likes girls or a guy that likes guys. In those situations, we don't want to say I love you because again, it could be a fatuation. But when we do it with friends that are guy friends that we really feel love for, like I described in my eighth call about on my, I read a part from my book and I talked about Nate. I loved Nate. I loved Nate. He was not someone I wanted to be in a romantic relationship, but I felt deep love for him as a human being and as my friend. And so, you know, should I say, I hold that back, you know, not say I love you. I don't want him to get the wrong idea. And there's certain situations where you don't want to take advantage of someone. So you want to be very careful about their feelings. But what I notice more than that is that we don't say it enough to our friends. Like, our, you know, peer to peer type friends that we deeply love because love is just for your mom or love is just for your dad or love is just, and we have this, like we put all these rules around love and love is a feeling and it's not, it doesn't play by any rules, you know, it doesn't have all of this, you know, yeah, you'd want to distinguish it from a chemical infatuation experience of oxytocin coursing through your veins and but but also oxytocin is the bonding agent between a mother and her child and why don't we call that that is love too. It's it's basically the love hormone. So it is loving feelings. Is it deep, true, profound, everlasting love? Does love have to last forever? No, it does not. Boom, there it is, the proclamation as made by me right now, right here in this very moment. <laughs> but we 
often are afraid to tell people I love you that are in our lives that mean a lot to us and we reserve love for only mom and dad and sister and brother and aunt and uncle maybe and grandma and grandpa and it just stays in this like nuclear family. If you don't have a nuclear family, are you not allowed to love people? Or are you not allowing yourself to love people is more importantly the question because I know from my own experience that I did not for a while, you know. I was just like, I don't know what to say. I feel like I love these people and I feel closer to them than I ever felt to my family. Uh, but we've been programmed not to say those words and they're very uncomfortable to say with people that are not family like the putting it out there and saying it the first time is like <clears throat> you know I believe in sharing love freely letting people know you love them and so letting them know they are loved again our hearts need to love people and a lot of the isolation that we feel is our hearts not being able to like meet a, a receiver, you know, it's like electricity going to a light, you know, and if our electricity doesn't have anywhere to go, it just, it feels like this ache of like, I'm not turning any lights on. I'm full of this thing that I have nowhere to give it to. And then we often look at the love in our heart as a limited resource, which it is not. It is the exact opposite of that. If you strengthen your love muscle, if you start sharing love with others, you become lo more loving and this continues to blossom in your life and it attracts people to you because when you're like charging up all these lights everywhere, you're lit up too. Just in the it's kind of a reciprocation thing that when your love is going out and it's being received in wonderful ways and you are turning on the lights and making the world a brighter place for everyone, you stand out and people find you better um, and are able to find you. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to talk about also is love as a limited resource. When did we get this notion? <laughs> That, you know, you can only love one person. And I think there's like a lot of things with relationships where we feel jealous. And so we're like, you can only really love this one person. And, and I remember going through all these rules when I was younger, like a teenager or maybe even younger than that, where I was thinking about, but you truly love only one person in your life. And it's like, I don't know why I came up with that or that was even perpetuated socially that, you know, and I think in a monogamy and everything that's great and all, but I've had more than multiple soulmates. None of them soulmate to me is a person that we come together with, we love, and we learn a valuable soul journeys lesson in the relationship with them. And I have had those people. I've had those soulmates where I've had these powerful relationships that taught me valuable lessons and I am glad they are over. <laughs> the, the, those lessons are over, you know, but I will love those people forever for what they taught me and what I got out of those relationships, even though I'm not in love with them anymore in that, like in the rosy, you know, in the rosy, in the in the throes of the uh, oxytocin chemical bonding thing. I'm no longer bonded to them and thank Jesus for that. <laughs> but we come up with rules. I, I did and I know other people have as well because I remember talking about this, you know, with people when I was younger about it, you know, and it's just a thing that goes around that we come up with these ideas about love and only loving so many people and only having so many people in our lives to share that love with in a certain way or respect or regard. And it keeps us from loving our friends and saying I love you to friends and saying I love you to people that are in our lives or admitting, acknowledging the love that we feel for people that taught us valuable lessons that are no longer in our lives. It's like, you know, I still love my parents, even though we don't have a relationship anymore. I'm grateful for all the lessons I learned from two really extreme narcissistic personalities 
they taught me a lot. They were soulmates for me, you know? They took me on a soul journey and we learned soul lessons together. And thank you so much. Um, uh, no more, please. <laughs> in that situation, I mean, I want to learn more lessons. But I came to a point in my life where I was like, I've learned a lot from pain and suffering and injury. And, and as my teacher Kathleen Scott said, and I quoted her in my book, I've learned so much from pain and suffering, and I'm ready to learn from love and joy and laughter and light and beauty and harmony. And so the lessons of my life now are enriching those qualities because of having gone through all those other experiences where I thank you, I learn, I'm thankful to myself and my soul and my spirit for learning the lessons from those hard, tough relationships so I didn't have to repeat them anymore because, you know, you get to your 40s and it's kind of like, okay, how long are we going to do this for? <laughs> and it doesn't mean that life won't be hard after that, but at a certain point, once you, 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 the lessons are more loving. The lessons are more about loving, enduring relationships and how to manage those and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you have. Like, I think we all have. And hopefully, you know, some more than others, unfortunately. But hopefully we continue to just say, okay, thank you. I've learned everything I need to learn from pain and suffering. And I'm now ready to release that experience with gratitude and say I'm ready to learn from love. But saying I love you is a big deal. And so... I think partly because we make it a big deal. It has so much meaning. You know, they say life has the meaning you give it, but I love you has the meaning you give it. And to me, I love you is letting someone know that I'm grateful for their presence in my life, that I'm grateful for people being around and sharing my life with me. And um, it's, it's, it's a big way of expressing something that lets people know that you really profoundly affected their life in a way that they will be grateful forever even if things don't work out and things don't maybe pan out or maybe you grow apart, but you are going to always have love for this moment that you shared together. And I think that we need to express that more as humanity and as a society. And the more that I do it, the more I find it is like a muscle and it just gets stronger and stronger. And the love inside of me, there's more of it to share with more people. The more I express it in those moments of gratitude and joy and love that I share that love with others has been very powerful for me in making my life Rosie. And I think that is one of the main reasons why I am never alone and I have attracted wonderful people into my life and that I can be picky. <laughs> that I can be picky about who's in my life because, you know, they say beggars can't be choosers. I'm not in that situation. I'm not in a sense of lack where I have to just tolerate the people that are in my life right here and right now, I can say, mm, no, I don't think that's working out for me. There's, there's going to be a lot more, you know, there's other fish in the sea. And I say that with friendships is it applies to romantic relationships It applies with friendships. It applies with everything that I feel that I don't have to subject myself to something that's less than what my soul deserves or desires. And I can find people that share my vision. I don't have to be with people that do not share my vision and don't share my values. I can say, okay, I'm going to wait until I find someone who aligns with my values, with my vision, with my life. Hi, Francis. Um, so sharing the sentiment, I love you, is big. And when it is received, it is huge. It gets even bigger. And when you are able to share it with someone and they receive it, you have more to give. Um, it just comes flowing. That light shining on the other end of you sending out that electricity of love to their, to their lamp 
it fills you with light just to see it come on. And that is just like, it's like a generator. Like lo I think love is the power of the universe because it is just, if they could harness it, it could do so much in this world. And we could do so much in this world if we continue to harness our power of love and share it with others and to continue to generate it and find people that are willing and mature enough to receive our love and to benefit from it. And, you know, there are some people that cannot receive love. We know who those are really quickly when you say I love you to them and they get, they distort and twist and they turn it into a pain experience where they're easily offended or whatever it is on their end that's going on that's none of our business really but we can see it you know where it's kind of like uh, there's a short circuit there happening when I say I love you you can't accept it you can't receive it you can't turn the light doesn't turn on and you know you can respect that you can still you know love those people where they are but you may not want to be like continuing to like trying to like course that energy at them directly as like an only outlet for your for your what you have to send in and to give in relationships and in the world um so that was the main thing I wanted to say today is just keep sending love out there it's watch where it where it turns on where it turns someone on allow it to continue to fill you up um, because you'll never be empty if you're giving love to, to people. You'll never feel alone if you're giving love to people. And the more people that you find that are healthy receivers of love in your life and in your world, the more that those messages of love come back to you and make you brighter and more attractive to the healthier people that can receive it. Again, it's like this weird upward spiral where the more healthy people you love, the more healthy people you are attract to be loving toward and to share the love. Now it's time to walk away. If you've spent any amount of time on that, yes, on those relationships where they don't receive where there's there's a disconnect there where there's something m malfunctioning where they can't receive the love that you have to give I agree and 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 more than walk away like I said in one of my earliest videos is what you're walking toward so focusing on what you people that you can it's it's about diverting pivoting and like with boundaries it's like this is your camera what do you want to focus on do you want that person in your frame that can't receive love or do you want to change this frame to over here to somebody that can receive it and even if you say it to yourself every day that's a if that's the only person you have to start with start with that start with writing get a paper out and write down 10 things you like love about yourself that are just like oh my gosh you know what I really love about me? <laughs> and if you have no one else to give love to, you need this exercise. It's not selfish. You're already in need of it. If you have no one else to channel this to, start channeling it with yourself. Get that generator going. And it's like priming a pump, you know? It's like once it starts flowing, again, that light turns on. Your light turns on. Your life becomes rosy and everybody wants to be around to smell the roses, you know, and experience you in your full bloom of loving lovingness, you know? It's just like, ooh, there she is. That lovely girl that I want to be around. I want to have a relationship that I want to do stuff with. So if you have no one to channel that love to, start with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror. Find something you love, even if it's a little thing, even if it's like your eyelashes or your toenails or something. <laughs> Find something. Maybe it's your, I mean, I can like name off so many things because I've done this for years, but you know, for me, I can start with um, a self-love journal. Oh, I love that. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. And yes, wonderful. So Crystal says, my sister and I started a self-love journal. Between that and listening to you, thank you, it's really helping me. So yeah, a gratitude journal, 
and a self-love journal, one of the one little things that I do when I'm doing my gratitude journal is rather than just say, I'm grateful for blah, blah, blah. I say, I am so happy and grateful now that blah. So that's my little phrase that I put in front of my gratitude. I am so in love with life now that bloom you know, whatever it is that I'm grateful for. And I also put stuff from the future that I'm already grateful for <laughs> in advance. I, I am always grateful in advance. I am so happy and grateful now that my, you know, uh, Substack subscribers have hit 100, you know, <laughs> and all these people are receiving the messages that I have put out in loving ways and they are spreading love to other people in the world is becoming a more loving place because of me sharing my messages. Those kinds of things that you continue to, I, I'm grateful in advance that, that that desire is seeded in me to want to make the world a better place. I'm grateful for that uh, me that's willing to be open to that desire to allow that to happen and for my body to be the place and my life to be the place in which this experience can happen to share with other people. So I'm so happy and grateful for that. And I'm so happy and loving life now that this has happened. And so I always try to make my gratitude statements in the present, even if they are things that haven't come to be yet. I always put them in the present tense. I'm grateful for things that are going to happen. I'm grateful for things that haven't happened yet. I'm grateful for things that happened in the past. I'm grateful for things that are happening right now. I could, you know, you could go on forever and ever with gratitude, you know. Um, there's that biblical teaching in all things give thanks. And for me, that's a big part of my life is to see that there's just, you never run out. It's infinite, you know. And people talk about, there's a very popular narrative in society right now where people are talking about, privilege and it, it feels exclusionary it feels like those people have privilege I am in a place of lack where I don't have that privilege and I think that it's a very dangerous thing to point and say good things are outside myself good things are over there good things are somewhere happening somewhere else outside of my life and my field of influence that I have no control over and bad it, it it conversely infers that bad things are happening where I am that lack is happening where I am and that's a very dangerous place to be and so whenever I see that sort of thing happening I um, encourage people to take on gratitude as a challenge to think of all the ways in which they themselves have privileges because gratitude privilege is the same as blessing and we're all infinitely blessed and we're all infinitely privileged and I can't say so and so is happier than I am I can't know what's going on in their head I can't compare their happiness to my happiness I can't compare their blessings to my blessings I can't compare their privilege to my privilege based on anything arbitrary for sure you know uh <laughs> that's why i always say you, you know if you want to talk about privilege you walk in a cancer ward and like pick which ones of those people that are suffering in there are it better off or some you know a ward where everybody's on ventilators you know who's more privileged of those people you know it, it, can you pick an arbitrary reason why somebody is higher up than somebody else on the totem pole in that state or frame of circumstances? And so these other things are all subjective and arbitrary. And I think we have to be really careful about that and continue to love our life, continue to love our blessings, continue to amplify the privileges and the blessings that we have. It's not about denying your privilege either. You know, it's just like, Yes, we are privileged. We are all privileged to be able to breathe, <sighs> to be able to exhale. I love that I am able to do that. I love my privileges. I love my blessings. And I hope that other people pick up on the fact that this is something that is a self-generating priming pump and that if you are not tapping into the I love my life energy, it is 
it's a downward spiral that comes to an end. You know, the upward spiral just can ever expanding, you know. But the downward spiral comes to a point where you just don't have much left. So we want to continue to like get that swirl going of love in our lives. You know, the rosy bloom blossoming experience of joy and delight. <laughs> Oh, I have loved doing this um, 10 days. It's been really wonderful for me. It was part of a challenge in the, um, uh, it's a course called First 100 Leads. I already had like, I already had like 90 subscribers on my Substack when I started and now I have like 95. <laughs> but it was like a really slow going process of building Substack subscribers and not just for doing the subscription on Substack, but for really connecting with people and feeling like I, this is what I meant to do. And I knew this was my calling and this was something that I love doing is going live and sharing what I learn and my quick tricks and hacks for life with other people and and it's been good to be challenged to get out and do it every single day. I mean, it's a little intense doing it every day and coming up with a topic and an outline every single day to jump on and um, share. However, it's been a really good challenge and I think it's been um, awesome for me. I hope it's been awesome for everyone that jumped in and I've also, you know, been sharing all of these to my YouTube channel, which I hadn't been putting much energy on. And I got a free one-to-one -one session with Melanie Moore, who's one of my mentors. And one-to-one -one sessions with her are pricey. Um, <laughs> but I ended up getting one because I'm in her membership community. And she offered and said, who, who wants to do this because I'm going live on my Instagram with people in our community and as a benefit, I'll like, if you chime in, um, you know, it'll be the order upon which it's received. So I was like me, <laughs> I jumped on it. Um, cause I don't believe in lack and I know other people will, and some people are afraid and they want other people to go first. So I will put myself out there and I had the most wonderful experience this week doing that Instagram live with her one-on-one. -on -one. And it was just really profound. And I realized how much of a pain body about my money stories I was holding on to, which really helped. So if you guys get a chance, go to um, Melanie Moore's page. And I'll probably share a link to that in here um, on her Instagram. And you can watch that one-on-one -on -one tapping. It's an EFT tapping session. And it was really powerful for me. And I won my friend Ellie's book that, you know, she wrote me a nice thank you and everything in it, but I actually, she was doing a contest and I ended up winning this. So that was cool because I had, I had purchased the online, but I really wanted a physical copy and I just hadn't got around to buying one and then to win it was really wonderful. And so I'm winning again. I'm in that, I'm in the spiral of, of receiving right now which I love. Um, I, and I, I always, I do this when I go through these phases where I am really turned on and happy and joyful. And then I start winning stuff and money starts showing up out of the blue. And a lot of things are just going better and better for me in my life with my kids and my family. And we're all getting along better and everything's just like the more harmony I bring into the world, the more harmony I receive in my life. And I didn't realize harmony was such a big value for me, but I'm realizing more and more that it is a very, um, it's a very big core value for me that I'm kind of embracing because a part of me was like, oh, that's cheesy, you know, <laughs> I'm very, um, left brain with analytical type person. And so valuing harmony seems very like, girlish or something. I don't know. And so embracing harmony has made my life a lot better. <laughs> and I'll just say it that way. Um, life without harmony is uh, not as fun and not as, and grace, you know, it's not as graceful. 
it's um, not as enjoyable and not as beautiful and not as loving. And so I definitely embrace that value of harmony and I hope to continue to spread more into the world, maybe just not quite so intensely as this 10 days, but we will be doing the more of the, um, not like this. It's going to be more of an experiential thing where I get to be more instead of on, I get to be more of the facilitator for other people in the workshop that's coming up, the Say Yes to Boundaries workshop. And it's going to be super fun and it's going to help people find their core values so that they can bring more of what they're putting out into the world, into their life and um, creating more joy or whatever their values are, freedom, you know, abundance, whatever it is. And so that's going to be a really wonderful experience for me and a little less on and a little more I'm facilitating and you're having the experience and I get to just receive as a facilitator like the power of the lessons taking place in the other people joining in that course although I've had that with some of you too in here thank you Crystal for one being here live every day in it and just being part of this that's been really fantastic very easy. I'm very easy to listen to and I hold your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am going to let you guys go because it is Friday night and I know we all have other wonderful things to get to to get our weekend kicked off and I hope this whole 10 day process really propels your weekend and makes your weekend the most harmonious, uh, the most full of fantastic meetings with people. In fact, you know, when I was looking at, I was like, you know what? I need to buy, I I designed all these t-shirts and I need to buy some and start wearing them out places. So I meet more people out in public. Um, I got these fun little, I have this test plus test positive apparel on my website and I sell these shirts that are, they say what I stand for as far as health freedom and those kind of things, but in a way that's really cute and fun and lighthearted and it like turns everything into a positive message I like cancel culture I have can do culture and it has like uh solar panels and like a little bitcoin symbols and all these things on it and, and a farmer you know with a solar panel out in his farm and so all that kind of stuff on it and then you know and I have all these different uh, hug for herd immunity and things like that and I'm like I need to buy one of my shirts and start wearing it out and seeing what I attract into my life you know um I designed all these shirts and then and just threw them on my website but haven't been wearing my messages um living my truth as much as I can so I might buy a couple shirts this week and see how they hit with the general public like at the grocery store you know people seeing it and and reacting to it and seeing if I meet more people that way and change numbers and make more friends that way but that's another way like I was talking about yesterday of meeting people and finding more people to say I love you too that would be wonderful I can't wait because I just there you can never have too much love in your life that's what it all, all boils down to. You can't have too much love in your life. You can't have too many people to love in your life. You can have too many people to annoy you in your life. And there's just not enough time for that. <laughs> if you're focused on creating love and harmony. And that's where it's at. Thank you all so much for joining once again. Especially thank you, Crystal, for being here. And I'm going to throw... Um, I didn't, this, this shirt, no, <laughs> they're like, they're like t-shirt designs that are silly and stuff like that. And, um, I'm going to put my Substack link for all of you that are not yet on it. The Sovereign Mom dot Substack dot com. And so thank you for all the hearts and love. I love you guys. Please subscribe to the Substack. It's free to subscribe and paying subscribers will get huge discounts worth way more than their subscriptions on upcoming classes, future classes and different things so that I offer. And so, you know, I want to make it very um, 
beneficial to you to become a paying subscriber as well, more than just the value of what I put out there. But again, there will be more. Lots coming up. Um, I will probably see you all next Friday at 5. And I don't know what I'll be talking about or who I'll be interviewing at this point. Um, but I'm going to try to go back to the Freedom Fridays program format um, and be bringing more interviews and more love and talks about shifting our focus to creation in the next few weeks and months to come. And it'll be probably once a week for a while and then we'll see where it goes from there. But thank you all for joining me for this. And again, subscribe to my Substack. And I write on there almost every couple of days. I love writing. So that is where I can be found. And there's community in the comments. Um, so be feel, you know, jump into the comments and start sharing and meeting people there. And whoever you've met on these lives as well, you know, start exchanging information with those people because they're I attract the best people on earth if I do do say so myself <laughs> anyway I love you thank you all for watching and being part of this and have a fabulous freedom Friday and a wonderful weekend bye